You're listening to the Coop Homeschool Podcast. This is your podcast for community, humility, and joyful fun in homeschooling. I'm Mandy. I'm Jessica. And this is The The Coop. Coop. It's reward systems today. Excellent. We know school days are full of them, right? Yeah. Whether it's traditional school or at Mm -hmm. home or even just living life, we have a lot of reward systems. So we want to talk about that and what that looks like in our homeschool. Maybe some Mm -hmm. examples I have. I don't know if you might have some too. And then um, then get into the nitty gritty. But first, let's do our scoop on the coop. Jesse? All right. Um, So my daughter has loved our coop group year of the book club. And so every month we read a book together as a group and then we have an awesome get together. And she was already sad that this school year was going to be over Mm. and we weren't going to continue the book club for next year. So I said, well, you and I can do that. You know, because she and I read a lot of books together that we talk about. You know, I read all the Percy Jackson with her. I'm reading the Penderwicks right now because she's... Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. I think yeah. she's further along than She's on are. book five on yeah. Penderwicks mm-hmm. now. I'm finishing book three myself. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping to take her out to, to brunch or something and oh. she and I can talk about it once I'm done. Um, so I said, there's no reason we couldn't do that. And then I brought it up with... Um, her great aunt and her great aunt said, who was an educator, she taught third grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade. And, um, you know, reading is really important to her. She still belongs to her own book club of over 20 years. Oh, that's amazing. So she was like, I would read those books. And I was like, let's do it. You know what, Aunt Connie, we're going to get you and we're going to do a book club. So then I thought, should I ask Sophia first? <laughs> and then it turns out she thought it was awesome. Yeah. So now the three of us are going to choose books, which is great. Because now that. Aunt Connie, as a longtime educator, she just retired last school year. And so she has tons to offer in, in books that I wouldn't have thought about. Or she's already done book yeah. clubs or book readings and assignments and all that stuff. So I love the multi-generational yes, too. It's yeah. sweet. And I'm always looking for more ways to connect, you know, with Aunt Connie as well. And so I'm looking forward to that. So now we have kind of our own little girls family book club. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Well I love that's I loved the coop this year. I know it was really great. It really worked out great. People really got into it yes. and it helped our um get togethers be pretty creative. Right. You know, between the um poetry reading, Alice in Wonderland, the right. the rescue farm. Right. The um we, you know, we did the animal humane society blankets yes. and right. the donut road trip, you yeah. know, and then more still to come. Right. So uh, it's amazing how much fun you can have reading a book together. I agree. It's definitely a great opportunity to learn as individuals with our own kids as we read the books with them and then being able to talk about it because they get that commonality, you know, and because they don't all go to school together in that traditional school sense. They get this opportunity to talk about what they've learned together, which is something homeschoolers don't often do because yeah. we all do our own things. We, mm-hmm. we don't share curriculums often. Right. And so it's just an opportunity to share those things and yeah. have that common ground. Yeah. yeah. And I think she'll probably really like next year though too. I think so too. Yeah. I think yeah. she'll be fine. She's always We're going to be sharing yeah. some learning together on that exactly. too. Exactly. Yes. So uh, my scoop on the coop is, uh, you know, bring, spring started a couple weeks ago yes. and I wanted to mention all the things that we did that yes. day on spring equinox okay. day. So um, from the blog that you wrote about mm-hmm. string traditions, our discussion about string, spring traditions really motivated me to awesome. have a spring day without over planning. Sure. Right? An so, easy day. Yeah. yeah. So... I, you know, I had a, a book that we read um, about a tree. Cute. I had, um, and I can link that. Right. And um, and it was a beautiful picture mm-hmm. book, and the kids really enjoyed looking think, at that book. I think book. you put that one on our Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. yeah. And um, we also uh, planted a fairy garden. Now, my son didn't care to be part of that, but he doesn't have to. It was no. just a fun a right. uh, thing that I got to do. He was actually out golfing. Since oh, he didn't care about doing right. that, he went golfing with my husband. Mm-hmm. And so I had the girls. And so we did a tea party. Yeah. And we did, and we made scones together, had Cute. the tea party. And we did the fairy garden. Yeah. And um, I think we sprinkled in some, oh, I think we watched a video about what the Equinox was. Right. And um, like on YouTube. And and so it was just, it felt like we really kicked off spring well, that's awesome. So if I can add, um, my husband was saying, 
Oh, but you, did you see the the recipe that oh. Jesse put on the yeah. on the blog? Maybe you could try making those. <laughs> well, it's right up your alley because you always make the almond flour banana muffins. Yeah. And so the almond flour, you just need yeah. the shredded coconut. You can oh, also probably yeah, totally. do without the coconut, but yeah. it adds. It makes it a little more carrot cakey. Yeah. 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 So. Um, so I'll hopefully try that in the next month or so. Yeah. And then if the kids like it, then I can work that into our traditional yeah. spring kickoff I've day. I've made those now like five times. Yeah, no, and they look yeah. so good. Yeah. When I saw you easy. post it yeah. on the blog and on Instagram, I was like, those look amazing. They are not what I was thinking they were going right. to look like. Yeah, they're yeah. cookies, yeah. but they have the idea of carrot cake, Yeah, just not the density of the carrot cake when yeah. you're expecting something different. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, cause I okay. don't even like carrot cake. So, right. so we've talked about that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's get to reward systems okay. and, um, okay. So I have to say when I was a traditional school teacher of seventh and eighth graders, I was fresh out of college. I was getting my master's of ed and I was teaching these seventh and eighth grade kids. And I was shocked actually, and I shouldn't have been shocked, but I was shocked at how unmotivated the kids were. They seriously did not want to learn. And I remember getting together with some of the teachers saying, what is it? What happened? Because you know when kids go to kindergarten, there right. a lot of them, even though they might cry about the separation, they're excited. They're right. excited to get citizenship of the week. Or right. they're excited to get their star. Or they're, they're all excited for kindergarten. So right. what happened? What happened between kindergarten and seventh grade? And the other teachers were like, we have no idea. If we could bottle motivation right. and give it to the kids, we would. Yeah. And so that's a big question. And yeah. we've talked about this before. And you had some really great insight. Uh, I can't remember which podcast it was. But um, but it's a, it's a common thing we see as kids get older. They're right. unmotivated. And, right. and the question is why. Right. So one of the things we do to help with that is reward system. Sure. So you have the extrinsic mm -hmm. versus the intrinsic. So yes. extrinsic would be awards like trophies, bonuses, you right. know, like, like bonus points or, mm -hmm. you know, I did that as a math teacher. Right. You know, I would say, oh, if you get it done before the end of class, you get an extra credit point, you right. know. Um, and it could be really extrinsic would be any reason we do work right. other than the enjoyment of the work itself. Right. So, and it could be even something as you plant a garden, not because you like planting, but because you like to see the flowers bloom. Mm -hmm. That would be an extrinsic reward. Whereas intrinsically is you do it because you enjoy the actual act of right. what you're doing. You enjoy right. planting the plants because you enjoy putting your fingers in the dirt. Mm -hmm. You enjoy creating and making. Right. You know, whether or not they bloom won't change whether or not you garden. So, so... It doesn't even have to be like a synthetic reward system. It can literally just be any reward you get from it mm -hmm. that's over and above the act of doing it would be okay. extrinsic. So so we do that in everything. You get sure you get fifty cents if you do this, you get right. a dollar if you you do this, and you may hate cleaning your room, but you have a clean room afterwards. Look how beautiful it is. Right. Oh, and you just got my encouragement. Right. So that's extrinsic rewards. Right. So I have a couple examples of extrinsic rewards okay. and what they did to my kids. Yes. Okay. So first is a lovely family member introduced a kindness chart. Yes. And this is when my kids were like, I think my third kid was just born, you know? And so they're, my kids are, you know, two and four. And so they're trying to say, Hey, let's have a kindness chart. Yes. And they gave them this little chart, like a sticker chart with Mickey Mouse stickers. And it was so thoughtful and so kind. But what happened is now they're not helping mommy for the act of helping mommy and getting satisfaction right. out of helping somebody. But they're now helping mommy because they get a sticker. And there's an expectation attached to that. Yeah. Right. So once you get to the end of the sticker, a right. sticker chart, what do you get? Something. You right. get another reward. So you have the reward of the sticker. And then you have the look forward to reward. Yes. And so that is what happened. And then when I noticed anytime they did something nice, anytime they helped at all, they said, do I get a sticker? And then that's when I was like, you know what? 
We're not doing this sticker right. chart. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did you find that you were ever using the sticker to oh, get I'm them sure to I was. You would hold the sticker hostage? Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I only ask that. Because... You'll get a sticker. Right. You'll get a sticker if you do this. Right. Or be careful. You might not get your, your sticker. sticker. If yeah. you don't do this with a good attitude, you right. won't earn your sticker. As a younger dance teacher, I did the same thing. I would... I mean, it's very tradition. I think I've even talked about it on here, so I won't go too far into it. But at the end of dance class, as a kid, I would get an M&M. That was our reward, you know. (laughs) And then it became, let's not give kids candy or Mm -hmm. chocolate or Mm -hmm. food of any kind. So then there's stickers or you get a stamp. You know, they still do it at gymnastics. Most teachers still give stickers. And I was doing it up until about seven or eight years ago Mm -hmm. until my kid was in classes. And I was like, this is ridiculous. But I would find I would hold them hostage all the time. Yeah. I would say, oh, we need to, you know, and then I would use that to motivate them to behave rather than just have the expectation that this is what we do in dance class and we should be proud of our hard work right. and how we learn to control our bodies, to control our behavior during dance class. Yeah. Just that is the, the act of doing right. it, right, right, is the reward. Right. I, so I was at Disneyland. And my kids were deathly afraid of roller coasters. But I felt like, you're now at an age. You can't go on Pirates of the Caribbean. This is nuts. (laughs) Come on. And so I turned to my dad, who's like the wisest of all. Yes. And I said, should I offer to pay them like a dollar or buy them a toy if they go on a roller coaster? And he was like, no. (laughs) No. They're at Disneyland. Yeah. The reward (laughs) is the ride itself. That is... And it's like, oh, so so here I was taking the fun away. Right. I'm taking their freedom away, right. actually, to enjoy something for enjoyment's sake, right. you know. Um, I did another thing. We were playing the card game golf. Right. And um, my son, who's 10, and I were playing it. And I was super excited because he was getting almost to 100 points. And in, when you play the, the the card game golf, it's almost impossible to get to 100 points right. unless you long play. Like, sure. unless, like, you're both willing to trade out cards as much as possible to get as many points as possible. Sure. So he was, like, at 93 points. And I said, and he, we're getting really excited. Do you think we'll make it to 100? Will they make? So then I, being such a, a extrinsic person with all my encouragements and compliments right. and all that stuff, I say, how about if you get to 100 points? I'll give you 10 bucks. I'm like, awesome. Right. Yeah, like, what a fun reward, you right. know? And he literally started crying. Yeah. I just took all the joy out of the situation, right? Right. And out of the whole experience, and I was just like, I am so sorry. He's like, well, now I feel pressure. What if I don't get 100 points? And then right. I won't. Then it's I feel a fail so... to him. Yeah. Like he was going to fail now if he yeah. didn't make it to 100. Yeah. And it was so much pressure. And I was like, right. okay, well, we don't have to do the $10. He's like, well, no, now I want the $10. Right. But I want it. And yeah. so now, yeah. It's so much pressure. And he didn't, he didn't get it. Right. So, you know, I was just like, wow, I really learned like the extrinsic rewards that I purposely you know there there's natural like I said with gardening natural extrinsic rewards that naturally happen so do I really need to impose synthetic ones right and 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 it left me feeling like gross like I was I I felt icky you told me about that one and I was like oh you know not because I think you did anything wrong but just the outcome of that yeah you know because you have a child who was enjoying the moment yes who was receiving a reward just by playing and feeling excited to even get close to 100 yeah and then suddenly it became a thing and then yeah there yeah. was a, because I relate to to your son in that perfectionism kind of way when you set someone up to have a pass or fail it totally becomes a thing with a lot of pressure self-imposed even yeah. you know Right. Yeah. Well, and what it's research hard. shows, so, um, you know, I was a psych major and I knew this was out there. And I think you, in your classes too, in your mm-hmm. psychology classes, you've learned this too. And what people are totally are unaware of is that extrinsic rewards can actually undermine and mm-hmm. demotivate yes. your child. Yep. So there's actually an article on psychology today, you know, my favorite go-to. Yes. 
uh, called Extrinsic Versus Intrinsic Motivation at Work. Mm -hmm. So it's really talking about adults and in the workplace, but sure. I think the, the psychology, the, the research is all the same. Sure. And it's by uh, David Burkus, and it's a really neat article for those in, anyone interested because it really spells it out in layman's terms. Right. And it says in in extrinsic motivation, there's something called expectancy theory, and it's by Victor Vroom. What a fun mm -hmm. name, right? Yes. V squared. So, um, so, and the expectancy theory is is just commonly accepted as you know you make choices based upon maximum pleasure. Right. And, um, naturally. Yeah. We naturally. Yeah. Yeah. So you have an expectancy. You, you put forth an effort, you perform, your performance will work towards mm -hmm. something, right? Instrumentality performance leads to a reward. Right. And then balance is you desire what the reward is, the right. motivator. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's all, that all makes sense. It's all common, yeah. common sense. Okay. But Again, this is now, just in these little examples we've given, takes away yes. from their own internal motivation. So I right. think of traditional school, I think of me wanting to get the A. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not learning for learning's sake anymore. No. I want the A. But what did kids do before they entered formal schooling? Right. What did they do? They, they did things because they were excited to. Yeah. Right. They walked because they wanted to walk and get somewhere. Right. I didn't have to reward them. They wanted to learn to read a book because they wanted to read a book. Yeah. Right. Not because someone was going to give them something. Yeah. They're not they're not learning to eat with a spoon because I'm like, oh, and clapping right. and saying good job. Although that's nice. Right. They're not doing it because of that. No, my son wanted to do it himself. Yeah. Right. It's a natural thing inside of them. Yes. So so we're in agreement basically that the love of the work, the satisfaction they get from doing the work is probably what we all want for our kids. Exactly. So I, I feel like I'm doing a lecture here. I'm just like repeating, you know, like right. what you can look up and read for yourself, but I found it so interesting. Right. So intrinsic motivation, people say you can't increase it. That's their intrinsic. That's what's inside of them. Right. But you can. Right. So this article talked about five characteristics that can affect their intrinsic motivation. So skill variety. Sure. So if you're on an assembly line, there's no skill variety. It's one thing they're doing right. over you and specialize. over again. Right. Yeah. So if they're doing one thing over and over again, there's no variety. There's n less interest. Mm -hmm. So then I, I think of that in homeschooling. You know, think yeah. of this when it comes to homeschooling. Right. The application. Yeah. Right. Like, are you having them do the same thing over and over again every single day? Right. Or is there a freedom to do, is every day look different? Mm -hmm. What's, what kind of variety do you have in their life? Okay. Then there's task identity. So knowing that your, um, your role is significant. Yes. So your role matters. Like mm -hmm. you identify with the task in some way. Right. And then there's task significance that mm -hmm. what I'm doing matters. Yes. So, um, like matters to yourself, exactly. you know, right. and it can matter to the community, sure. but you have to see, oh, it makes a difference and right. that's all intrinsic. So if you, as a, as an educator can figure out how to reach them in that way, yes, then that can help their intrinsic, you know, yeah. and all of this is multiplied by the other two characteristics, which is autonomy and the feedback. So if they are, the feedback is more like relational. Mm -hmm. Like, so if they're, because feedback would normally be extrinsic. Right. But if they can see that, like, what I'm doing has significance, mm -hmm. that will increase their significance. Right. And they'll want to do it more. Sure. You know, and then autonomy, having the freedom to choose. So where, what kind of schooling gives the most freedom? Right. You I know? know? Yeah. yeah. Throughout this, I keep thinking about its application to homeschooling. And it's interesting because, you know, I've read um, uh, Free to Play, Peter Gray's book, and it was actually super interesting because he talks about even the freedom to let children have autonomy in their play because as adults, we impose all of these rewards or these in extrinsic systems in when we are running it. So imagine a game of baseball. And if adults are setting it up like Little League and these things, mm -hmm. what happens for the winning team? What happens for the losing team? Mm -hmm. You know, and granted, most people get participation awards now, right. and so the losers don't feel quite so much as losers. But 
they lose and yeah. adults are telling them they didn't win yeah. or adults are telling them they win. But now imagine, you know, think of the Sandlot, right? Yeah. And so you think of a pickup game of baseball or a pickup game of soccer or whatever it is. They're just playing for the sake of playing. playing. There might be winners and losers, but the goal is to play. Mm -hmm. So if they're so caught up in a competition that leaves people not wanting to play, Mm -hmm. they're not going to play. So the reward is the act of playing and keeping this group happy. You know, and so it's a very interesting idea. And then you can kind of move that along into homeschool as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about your children and do I want them to always be learning in our homeschool day to please me? Right. No, I want them to learn because it's fun to learn and it's interesting Mm -hmm. to learn and I want them to enjoy learning. But how hard a job is that? Yeah, right. It's really difficult. Especially when they don't have the autonomy to choose what they're learning. Right. So, I mean, where do we find our kids having the most joy when they have the freedom? When my daughter is at the computer making movie trailers yeah. and I'm just yesterday I'm seeing her and my son Ruby and Micah they're sitting there and she's like okay let's have a spooky house where a kid is inside and we have to go rescue the kid right I was like can you please make sure there's no like blood yeah. and things like that going yeah. on keep and, it g-rated yeah please. like maybe yeah. it's like a, a, tre- a treasure hunt or right. something right so then they're trying to decide on a title together, but that was the only place I inserted myself. Right. And then they're picking them. Yeah. They're yeah. picking their music and they're and they had so much fun doing that. And so they're being creative together. They're creating right. a storyline together. Yes. Yeah. They're negotiating. Right. Like my son would say, Let's call it this. And my daughter would be like, No. And then he'd be like, Let's call it this. No, let's call it this. And he's like, Okay. Right. You know, and so they're figuring this stuff right. out. And if I had said to them, okay, you guys are going to create a movie trailer about this, and it, it would take the f- intrinsic value out right. of it. And then if I said, and then you'll get a cookie. You, oh, you'll, you'll put a sticker on your sticker chart. Right. That takes, it takes it something away. It. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know when you want to give a gift to someone, like with your time. Right. You know, like you want to help them with something. And then if they pay you afterwards, you're kind of like, ew. Right. You know, like I actually... It's kind of nice to get the money, but I actually don't want the money because now it's not a gift. Right now, I now I don't get as much joy out of it. Right. Right. So like when I when I'm making even if I work for somewhere that I really love, once I start making money at it, I'm like now it feels like a job because you know and extrinsic rewards are a must. You know, getting paid to do a job, especially if it's something you don't want to do, but you have to do, then you need the extrinsic reward. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, but you know, going back to the baseball thing, you know, everybody got medals and trophies. Sure. And I actually hated that. Right. Now you're getting a reward. Everyone's getting rewarded because they played. Why do they need a reward for playing? The reward is playing. Yeah, that <laughs> exactly. So they got to learn how to play baseball. They were coaching or getting coached and yeah. they were having fun, hopefully. And if they weren't having fun, then maybe they did earn that trophy. Yeah, I, I know. If they weren't having fun and could have a positive attitude. Right. You know, unless unless they found joy in having that positive attitude, you know. But I have thrown away all my kids' trophies. <laughs> and then the last time they got a trophy, my son... My, I said, oh, let's just throw that away when we get home. And he was like, no, I want to keep it. I'm like, okay, it's his. He can have it. Right. I've thrown away 10 seasons of baseball trophies. Right, up he, to that he point. He can have right. this one. Right. <laughs> so. but, and we keep the medals because those are easy right. to keep. And he was proud of them or whatever. And exactly. that's, you know. But it's just something for us as parents to keep in. You know, right. when I was teaching Sunday school, actually, the kids were supposed to memorize something. Mm-hmm. Every week. And this is a four and five year olds. Mm-hmm. And when they came back, if they said it, so I am 24, 25 years old, 26 maybe. And if they came back, and I don't have kids yet. Right. So if they came back and said it, then they got to pick from the treasure box. Yes. And I had bought all these like 99 cent treasures, bouncy yes. balls, little slinkies, whatever. And I could not understand when like three or four months in, the parents, a lot of the parents were not happy with that. And one of the elders came and said, oh, the, you know, some of the parents are saying they're not really happy with your reward system, basically. Right. And I was like, what? Right. They're all saying Why? their horses. Yeah. They're, they're getting it done. And he's like, well, it kind of takes away from them just doing it because they, they want to show love to God. Right. Spend time in the word. Memorize it. Yeah. Right. 
Like, and they I was, want the reward. And I was like, yeah. oh, well, I think some parents still like it. And he's like, yeah, I, have only, sure. I haven't heard complaints from everyone. And I was like, well, then I'm going to keep doing it. Because <laughs> you didn't know. Yeah. yeah I and, know. And now I'm like, you don't oh, know man. what you don't know. I yeah. know. I, when I tell other teachers who aren't parents yet that I just stopped doing stamps, and they're like, well, then what do you do? <laughs> we bow. And then we clap our hands for each other at the end of class yeah. to say, good job, friend. Yeah, that's enough. And yeah. I used to give hugs pre-COVID. Oh, yeah. Well, now we hugs, do air that's high a fives. relational. That's right. a relational right. thing. Right, right, yeah. Only if they wanted to, obviously. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't go around hugging every child. <laughs> but they come were, here. They were allowed <laughs> to come up to me if they wanted to. Like, the idea was that we did a class together, and the reward was just that. Yeah. Whatever we accomplished today, that was the reward. That was what we did, and that's why I wanted them to come. They're not coming for their princess sticker, you know, and then they would complain about the sticker. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, I want that sticker, and then they would fight for the line yeah. to get in their line to get a sticker. Right. It was this whole thing that I was creating because of a sticker. I know. It had it's nothing crazy. to do with, with dance the class. dance. Mm-mm. And so I did away with it, and so younger teachers, they'll look at me like I'm crazy. They're like, well, then. How do you keep them motivated? How do you keep them in line in class? Because that's the expectation yeah. of class. They can't be in class if they can't participate and follow directions. And that doesn't mean I don't teach with a ton of grace and reminding. Oh, totally. You know, I'm yeah. teaching babies and I hardly ever send a kid out of the room. Right. It is only when that kid is given the two options. I need you to follow the directions and do what I'm asking you to or you may leave for the day. Yeah. Yeah. And almost never does a child choose to leave. And when they do, it's very clear that that is a child who's working through right. self-control and these social emotional Or they might skills. not have the intrinsic, they may not want to do right. the class. Right. But those who do, that the, the class itself is reward enough. Yes. You know, and so, right. but, and so just in like practical application, then if you know your kid already enjoys something, right. there's no reason to right. put in an extrinsic, extrinsic reward, no. right? Yeah. But if you know something is total drudgery, but you still want them to do it for some reason, right. like a chore, yes. then, you know, yeah. then maybe that is a time to in- introduce right. 50 cents. Yeah. You know, we learned with Sophia, who's now nine. Even at the youngest age, she had no desire for extrinsic rewards. Hmm. She's not, this is, may not be accurate, and I don't want to put this on her, yeah. but she's not necessarily a highly motivated person hmm. or a, an extremely hard working kind of person. She's willing to put in sort of a medium amount of effort and accept the results. Like most of us. Like most of us, <laughs> yeah. sure. Um, and... There's nothing wrong with that, right? That's just right. a type of person. Mm-hmm. And she may change and maybe I'm reading her wrong. So to yeah. be fair to her, yeah. you know, that's just sort of my my quiet observation behind the scenes in learning how to 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 navigate with her and she's only nine. Do I need to encourage her to work harder now? Or are we just kind of gonna let her find something that she wants to work hard for? Right. You know, because why force her to work hard at something that she's not naturally finding a reward in? Doing? Yeah. So it's this balance, you know, we've said have we ever not talked about the balance of life yeah. and homeschool? Well, yeah, because like, people know? people go to jobs every day that they hate. Right. And the only reason they go is because they they find joy in making money. Right. It and provides bringing... the lifestyle they yeah. want. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So you know we try to balance that out, but there was a time where we tried the chores, you know, and we were very insistent that there are an expected level of chores that you do because you're a member of the family. Right. So you do that because that is the expectation to be in the family. And Dave Ramsey calls those contributions. Right. We call them just family. Yeah. Or the family chores. Yeah. And then we called, um, we started this money making chore. I made a oh, whole yeah. list. Oh, yeah. We've done the chart. Right. Yeah. And so it was if you wash the windows, you get this much and, you know, this kind of thing. She didn't care. Well, so it's the threshold right. because. My son, who had who has saved now probably over four hundred dollars, right? Getting fifty cents to do the dishes hmm. doesn't float his boat. No, but if I said I was going to pay him five bucks, right? But so now we, I saw that there was always a fight over who did the dishes. So mm-hmm. my daughter, the nine year old, said, "I'll make a chart, and then we'll just on Canva, right? Of course, and um, Canva.com, <laughs> and I'll make a chart." And we'll just check off whose turn it is. Yeah. 
And I'll say, and then I was like, yeah, and then that's the way you can make 50 cents. If you want 50 cents, there's a bag in the drawer right next to it. You can get out your 50 cents because we don't do an allowance. Right. So, so that is, and I was like, eventually that chore will just be a contribution. Right. You won't get paid for that. But right, right now we're getting in the habit. I'm okay paying you for this. Right. But I've talked to them time and time again that you can find fun in anything you do. Right. So finding the fun and just for each, I've even said for each plate you take out, say, I'm so blessed. I got to eat food. Right. You know, and say yeah. a blessing for each, right. you know, and you know, they're still young, but as my daughter's gotten older, she's found different ways to manage the things that she doesn't enjoy doing and to be able to find more ways to enjoy it. So she'll put on her audiobook with her oh, yeah, headphones while she's doing a chore. Yeah. You know, or she'll ask me, oh, can we put on this music while we clean? Of course we can. Yeah. Or I try to remember to offer it and say, it doesn't yeah. have to be that bad. Like yeah. we can sing along to songs together and hang out while we're doing these things, but you, we have to do these things. Yeah. And then, you know, I remark over how nice it is when our house is clean that we can do these things. Yeah, doesn't feel, this feel good? Right. It feels good. Yeah. And now we can do a puzzle on this table yeah. because the table is open or whatever yeah. it is. And that's so, an extrinsic reward. It is. Right. But that's a natural, natural. consequence extra. That's not a synthetic one. Right. right. No, I didn't I didn't tell her if she did it, she would then get yeah. it. Yeah. Right. It's just, oh, look it. Like how good this feels. Yeah. Like when their room is clean, look how, how does this feel? Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so um, you had asked me a question. I did. So yeah. as I was thinking about things this week, knowing that we were going to be doing this podcast, I, I the question came to me, are intrinsically motivated people more self-disciplined? I wasn't sure if there was a strong correlation there. So someone who... I mean, I, I yeah, because you would think if you have a lot kind of, of in, yeah. inside motivation, right, you would more likely do it, right. So I'm not sure if there's whether psychologically there's a connection there, or if there's just a correlation. Um, you know, whether self-disciplined people are more intrinsically motivated than others. You know, I don't need an external reward to do something. I'm just but, good with self-discipline. But, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder, like. So those achievers, like we've talked about how we're both achievers, right. but I'm thinking of the more extreme achievers right. that I know in my life. Their reward is the praise, right. is the money, right. is seeing that they got it done. Sure. But there's probably a big element that they also enjoy the work. Right. Now here's the thing. When I was thinking of this question, I didn't consider naturally extrinsic rewards oh, right. as being extrinsic. I right. was still thinking of those as intrinsic. So you actually taught me something today. Well, thank you. Yes. Because there's that fine line, right? Yeah. Because it's not synthetic. So I would have naturally just considered it an intrinsic reward. So right. when I posed this question, I was thinking, okay, what about, you know, when you're choosing not to have caffeine or you're oh, right. not doing these things and you're just very self-disciplined, you're able to get your work done, but those are all naturally extrinsically rewarded. Yeah. If you're not, um, overeating and you're not then doing you're those things, thin and, right. Yeah. Then maybe you're more physically fit. If you're remembering your self care routines and you're doing these yeah, things, your skin won't be so wrinkled. Right. Yeah. So now I'm seeing it a little bit differently yeah. and maybe the question is different. Maybe these aren't as highly correlated as I thought because but, maybe they're more extrinsically motivated. Yeah. It just looks like in intrinsic because it's a natural yeah. reward of doing but, it. So when you do your, your face skin thing, yes. because you have a really nice routine that I see you do on Marco Polo. Yes. And since I don't even wash my face, right? like if I get in the shower and even put my head under, that's the only time my face gets washed. <laughs> right. <laughs> but since you have a whole routine, do. do you actually maybe enjoy the routine, the feeling of cleaning your face and putting on, you know, rolling the roller and and doing all that, does it, is well, it a, I definitely feel don't good? feel highly motivated that I do it for my looks. I do it for my skin. So yes, in some ways, like the self-care aspect doesn't, you know, like I don't enjoy the routine okay. per se. I like being by myself now yeah. as a mom who's yeah. never alone. You know, so me in the shower and the bathroom and just taking my time and Marco yeah. following you yeah. half the time when I'm doing it. It's just my, it's sort of just a routine that I have. Yeah. But, um, you know, my dry skin likes when I put lotion on. Right. You know what I mean? So it's more that 
it's now just become um, something that I feel like I need to do. Yeah. And not so much that I wake up loving how my skin looks. Like, I don't know if it's making any kind of difference over my outward appearance, but I do enjoy the routine. So there yeah, is so some, there's an intrinsic, there's some yeah. level of enjoying it, but maybe not for for the routine itself yeah. or what the supposed outcome is supposed to be. I just like yeah. putting lotion right. on because my skin is dry. So, you know? so what I think would be fun for us to do yes. and our listeners as well okay, is for just, let's say tomorrow, pick a day, okay, just one day and see how often you are intrinsically, just you yourself oh, are intrinsically right. motivated to do something and how often it's extrinsic that right. you do stuff. And then the next day, look at pay attention. Pick one child to do that for. Right? Wouldn't that be fun? That would be interesting. So maybe we should um, challenge each other and put yeah, that that'd in our be stories. Fun. Maybe yeah. you pick a day, and then you can uh, try and add it to our stories yeah. on Instagram, yeah. and then I'll pick a day when this airs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. That would be fun. Yeah. All right. So, anything else we want to say about reward systems? Um, I don't think so. Okay, so let's go on to our new. Yes. Well, we're we're changing it up. Right, we're going to change the format of our show a little bit. We felt there was some redundancy in the scoop and the joy. Yeah. They often overlapped. It was maybe a little too much of our personal life. Like we wanted to be relatable. Yeah. But it might just be too much. Yeah. Maybe, Jessica. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as much as we love talking about right. ourselves. Right. <laughs> So we thought we'd answer a question from people that we're actually co- coaching and consulting with. Sure. And um, actually just today when mm-hmm. I was coaching someone who's new to homeschooling and considering whether or not to homeschool again next year. Ongoing, like yeah. She was a COVID homeschooler. Sure. So um, And didn't hate it. She likes no, it. No, she's excited about it. She just wonders what the future is. Yeah. yeah. And she wants to know what it looks like. And right mm-hmm. now she gets a packet that she has to complete. Sure. Every week and then every month and turn it in every month for right. those four weeks. Right. So she asked me, well, as homeschoolers, then how many worksheets do you do? Yep. So that opens up a whole yeah. treasury of discussion, mm-hmm. right? And um, Jesse, how many worksheets do you guys do a week, let's say? So she's holding up zero. Yeah. Except for the math workbooks, right? The math workbooks, that's a worksheet. Well, if you're talking averages every week, yeah. it's between probably zero and five. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. so I would have to give a range because definitely some weeks we don't do any worksheets. Our mm-hmm. learning looks a lot different than a worksheet. Right. And then some weeks we do maybe up to 10. So the yeah. average I would say is maybe between two and five yeah. over the course of the school year. I think that's that's Fair? probably the same for do me. Do it's accurate? I think it's yeah. Matthew C. is our really our only worksheets that we do. Right. Um, well now, so you're doing a unit study, the same company oh, that I'm yeah. doing. So the unit study, uh, it's sort of like a worksheet. I mean, that's our yeah. actual learning book as well. But those, maybe I'll do one or two units. I mean, one or two lessons per week. Right. And so that would be... I guess up to two worksheets per, Mm -hmm. you know, but in a day, definitely. No. Yeah. And I feel like, um, the traditional school does way more than that. Oh, homework is at least two to three worksheets a day. Yeah. And then all day during their school day. Right. Usually there's at least one or two worksheets done. Yeah, well, I even remember dropping our, when part of our enrichment enrichment academy, we would drop off our kids once a week. Mm-hmm. to this um, enrichment thing done through our homeschool charter school. Mm-hmm. And they were there three hours, and they would come out with like six worksheets, worksheets that they did. And then I'd be like, okay. And I get I on my way out to the car, there's a trash can, and I'd just throw them away. <laughs> it's like, right. you don't want to keep these, do you? No, right. I could care less about them. No, yeah. I remember us having the conversation of, well, I wanted them to have some experience in a classroom setting, mm-hmm. group learning, the opportunity to learn from a, a different teacher, you know, and so it was, it, we were kind of, and it was only well, three hours a week and, and the community. community was, and so yeah. we overlooked our, our, uh, design, Disdain, yeah, yeah. Our, our negativity towards worksheets for that reason. But it turns out my kid liked worksheets. She was like, oh, this is was fun. And yeah. I was like, oh. Okay, enjoy it. Well, what's yeah. funny is too. I remember talking with the director there, who like was so excited about the program, which was a really great program that they were in. But the kid, the kids would come, and she's like, 
And I'm getting it from two different kids. So now I have like a huge stack of worksheets in my hand, some with glue and glitter and whatever. Yeah. And and uh, she's like, oh, you know, um, yeah, you must go through so much. I, I'm just imagining this is every day. And I was like, oh, no, these are the only worksheets we do. And if we do any, they're in their actual book. Their workbook. Their, their workbook. That's workbook. for the whole year. Yeah. So there's no loose leaf. I don't print Pages. a worksheet. Yeah. yeah. And there's nothing, you know, floating around. And then when they're done with a book, a workbook, I throw it away. Yeah. So there, there's none of that. No. So, so yeah. yeah. And I, and I, I think it depends on your homeschool style, but we're pretty probably right on the same thing because like some weeks we don't do any math. Right. And then, or, well, we don't do any workbook math. The mm-hmm. math could be in playing games and being at the grocery store and guessing how much this all adds up to. Yeah. Today, my kids at Costco were, one of them was worth within uh, $6. Nice. And one was within $5 of the Good job. total. Too bad That's it was awesome. in the 500s. <laughs> I was like, well, but how often do you go? Yeah. Once yeah. a month? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Once every three or four, three weeks, probably. So anyways, um, so that would be our answer. Less than 10 a week. For sure. Oh, and for even sure. even possibly less than five a week. Right. And I'm not sure. It's always hard to know if we're thinking of worksheets as the same thing. Right. You know, because some of our worksheets are the, the book that yeah. they're learning from. Right. So, you know, to consider their Matthew C. math book a worksheet is hard because it's not that they go through the math book in class learning time mm-hmm. and then do a worksheet after, after. that. Yeah. That is their book. Right. So, mm-hmm. so it's always hard for us homeschoolers to know how to accurately answer that question because what we, what y- someone else might consider a worksheet, we would not right. necessarily. Well, and I remember I borrowed from my friend who is a traditional kindergarten teacher and I said, oh, can I borrow like, like you, whatever you use? Because I was entering kindergarten with right. my older one for the first time and I wanted to see what they did. Right. And I got two binders. I'm not kidding. Like... The thickest you could get, like six or seven inches, or those eight inch binders, or whatever. It's probably six inch binders. And so I was like, okay. So I went to like FedEx Kinkos and I was like photocopying them. And as I'm looking and photocopying like activities, I was like, this is all busy work. Right. Yeah. Like there was a couple good ones where it was like a Venn diagram between a spider and a bat. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. But, but a lot of it was just like, couldn't they just orally answer that question? Yeah. Do they really have to write it down? No. Yeah, so <laughs> so in homeschooling, you don't need a worksheet because you're there and they can actually answer the question right to you. Right. Whereas when you're a traditional school teacher like me, when I was teaching English, yeah. I needed them to turn in. Yeah, uh, they couldn't just physical. verbally spell right. to me. They couldn't verbally tell me what something mm-hmm. means. They couldn't verbally tell me, give me something in a sentence, yeah. use a word in a sentence. You can't do that for 20 to 30 students. No, I needed class. them to, yeah. to write it down and give it to me. Right. Whereas for my reading and writing, we I give them a word. We clap the syllables. They don't have to mark syllables. We oh, clap the yeah. syllables. We spell with our fingers right. for the, the sounds. And then we use the word in a sentence. And then they write down the single word. Right. So for spelling practice, but right. in a traditional in school, practice. you would write down the sentence, you right. mark how many syllables, you know, so it would be, you would need a worksheet for that. Yep. So yes, that's the long answer. Yeah. That's the long answer. How many worksheets, right? Whatever you want it to be that's when right. you homeschool. So, all right, I guess that's it. <laughs>